Today we're going to be looking at the top 10 time saving tips for Finale. Timestamps for each tip are in the description. If you're a veteran Finale user, I encourage watching the whole video, but you may want to skip to number 5. For number 10, we have scroll view and display in concert pitch. When writing music, page view can often be clunky and cumbersome, so I typically write in scroll view. Simply hit Control e or Command e if you're a Mac user to switch between page view and scroll view. In general, I use scroll view for writing and page view for engraving. In addition to this, something that also helps is going to document and display in concert pitch. This avoids having to site transpose your parts and can aid when writing original material in full score. Just be careful when you go to extract parts or create a PDF, if you don't turn this off, it'll leave everything in concert pitch. Don't forget to always have keep octave transposition in concert pitch checked Otherwise, you're going to end up with some nasty ledger lines as well. In number nine, we have space bar playback. Typically, there are three normal ways to play the MIDI in Finale. Going to playback settings, there is starting from a measure number, leftmost measure, and current counter setting. In general, most everyone I know writes in scroll view and uses leftmost measure to play back. But what you may not have known is that if you hold spacebar and click on a measure, you will get an instant playback of that measure. Nice if you're working on vertical harmonies. Just know that some dynamics and balance may be a bit off as Finale doesn't have the same amount of time to render audio as when you hit the play button. As a bonus tip, if you are doing something where you're entering a score before you arrange it and are tired of hearing every note played back, click on the simple note entry tool, then click simple in the menu which should have just appeared, then hit simple entry options, from there unselect playback notes on entry. This will stop any notes entered by anything other than a MIDI keyboard from playing when you enter them. For number eight, we have articulation shortcuts. When adding articulations, you always need to use the articulation tool. The two fastest ways to add articulations is to either drag and select dynamics or use hotkeys. By dragging and selecting, every note in your selection will have the articulation mark added. If you do this and an articulation is already present in the selection, that articulation will be highlighted for you to delete or move. In addition to this, if you hold down the hotkey for a certain articulation, then click on a note, that articulation will automatically be added. Knowing your hotkeys can come in handy when writing out something articulated heavy, such as a jazz chart. The letter for each articulation can be found in the articulation selection menu. Speaking of hotkeys, for number seven, one I use all the time when arranging for marching band is the elapsed time hotkey. Make a selection in finale and simply press three. The box that pops up will tell you the time at the beginning and end of the measure along with the elapsed time of the section. This is great for when I'm writing material for a marching band opener and need to check the length of the material I've written because the section has to be one minute, 45 seconds long. Piggybacking off of number seven is number six, music spacing. Typically when writing a composition, you'll end up with measures that have wacky spacing that either scrunch or stretch the notes. Typically you would deal with this by going to utility, music spacing, then using either note spacing or beat spacing, whichever you prefer. The shortcut is just making a selection and hitting control four for note spacing and control five for beat spacing. A word of warning though, only what you selected will be used for determining the spacing. If you only select the eighth notes in your wind parts, but the percussion have 16th notes, the percussion notes will be squished awkwardly together, so be careful what you select. Now we are getting down to the more advanced features. In the fifth slot, we have various ways to copy and paste. The quickest way to copy and paste within the same score is to left click, hold and drag your selection, then let go, re-click within the same selection, then move it to wherever you want in the score. However, there are even faster methods than this. Once you've made your selection, simply hold control and everywhere you click, the selection will be automatically pasted. Another trick is if you double click a measure, every measure in that vertical will be selected. My last pro tip for selection is that by using the dragging method, you can also select small portions of a measure or a longer note. Here's an example I use all the time. If you have a group holding out a chord, oftentimes you want to tie an eighth note on beat one to the whole note to signify the releases on beat one. Simply zoom out, make as small a selection as possible, then drag the selection over to beat one and let go. 
When zoomed out this far, you can't make a selection smaller than an eighth note, so don't worry about it being too small. More often, if you try and make it bigger, you'll end up with a quarter note or larger. Simply add ties and voila. For number four, we have the change font utility. Many published scores don't use the standard text fonts found in the Finale default templates. In order to find what font you prefer without having to change everything by hand, simply go to Document, Data Check, then Font Utilities. Select Search for this font, hit Select, then choose Times New Roman. The option Replace Font will already be checked. Go to Select, then choose whichever font your heart desires. My personal favorite is Gil Sam's MT. Hit apply and every instance of that font in the entire file will be changed. If you notice your new font is too big or too small, don't worry. Repeat the same process, but in the search for this font selection, choose the one you just switched to. Then click select scale font size to and change the percentage. Hit apply and you are good to go. In number three, we have the retranscribe tool. Sometimes when you're copy and pasting, you can end up with weird ties such as this. If you have 50 instances of that, it can be a major waste of time fixing them all. To fix this, simply highlight your transgressor, go to MIDI slash audio, click retranscribe, and it's fixed. This is a trick you don't use often, but when you do use it, it's a lifesaver. For number two, it's the process extracted parts tool. Let's say you've written a three-part harmony in piano and are now wanting to put that in three different voices. However, when you copy the notes to the respective instruments, all three notes are still present. The quickest way to fix this is to go to Plugins, TG Tools, then Process Extracted Parts. Make sure Keep Single Notes is selected, highlight the area you wish to change, then figure out which voice you want to keep. In this case, we want the top voice, so we'll select Top, then Go. Only the top voice remains. For the middle part, change the extract voice line number to 2. This counts from either the top or bottom, whichever you have selected. The middle voice has been kept, with the outer voices eliminated. If you had 5 voices, for example, and wanted to keep the third voice, you would choose from top, and then change the number to 3. Likewise, if you wanted the second note from the bottom, choose bottom, then change the number to 2. Finally, we have the bottom line, so we're going to change our extracted voice back to 1, select bottom, and we are left with the corrected voice in the part. Finally, for our number one slot comes one of the greatest time savers I've ever encountered. If you have an articulation heavy line, like in a jazz chart, copying the articulations to all the parts can be extremely tedious and time intensive. We have a tool so that you can copy the articulation slurs and dynamics, but not the notes. This makes it so that you only have to do one part and can copy it to the rest. So first, write out all of your articulations, smart shapes, and expressions, then select the passage you want copied. Right click the selection, then go to Edit Filter. From there, select None at the bottom of the new menu, then check Markings. This will auto check everything in that category. Only what is selected will be copied. Hit OK, then copy and paste your selection. You'll note that only items from the Articulation, Smart Shape, and Expressions tool have been copied, saving you loads of time. What you're doing is using a filter to only copy what you want, then filtering out the rest. If you want to be able to copy notes again, simply right click and unselect Use Filter, then carry on. Want to use the filter again? Just select Use Filter. You don't have to repeat the Edit Filter selection every single time. With that, we're going to wrap up 10 time-saving tips for Finale. Thanks for watching, everybody. Which of these did you know, and did you learn anything new? Leave a comment down below and let me know. Like ratings are very much appreciated, and if you really enjoyed, consider subscribing and hit the bell icon to enable notifications. Anyways, thanks for watching, and I hope to catch you in my next video.